have come here to chew bubble gum and kick ass. And I'm all out of bubble gum. Go ahead. Make my day. Cinema Royale. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Cinema Royale, where we keep it classy most of the time. I'm your host, Mike Mixtape, and let me introduce you to the brotherhood of cinema here. First up, we've got Cody Klusner. Good evening, everybody. I hope you all got your happy socks on, because it's going to be a fun ride tonight. Woo-wee! Going to be a good one, folks. And next up, we've got Andy Snyder with us tonight. Hello, one and all. And last but not least, we have Sam Fleming. Evening, folks. This is South Jersey Sam. How y'all doing? How y'all doing? Apologize for the noises in the background. You probably hear the chair creaking. <laughs> it's creaking. It's, crack. it's a creaking motherfucker. Uh, Rocking mother, mother and all that. All right, so tonight and this month, we're doing a Halloween themed topic. So. First off, we're doing Stephen King movies, but a little twist here. I've devised a movie bracket. A bracket of most people would do for sports, but this time with movies. So what I've done is take an eight bracket. I've done my research. I took to the site of Rotten Tomatoes. I looked at the scores and the average ratings. Yes, people, don't, fu- don't like cry at me. Like, don't use Rotten Tomatoes. It's horrible. I did my research. I did the scores and the average rating. Ranked eight of Stephen King's best movies based on those reviews. And I have it on a bracket right in front of me here. And we, the three panelists here, Cody, Andy, and Sam, are going to decide and debate what is the best of the best of Stephen King. Without further ado, let's go to the first round of movies. First off, we're going to go with our number five against our number four seed, uh, Misery versus the Dead Zone. That's and a tough one. Let's yeah, it's a bit of a tough one, actually. It, uh, it is. Let me go with Cody first, just to make things harder. Oh. Oh. <laughs> yeah, the spotlight's on me. I'm not afraid. <laughs> oh, well, I can't really say much on this one. <laughs> Oh, except for one movie considering I have never seen The Dead Zone. Oh, Aww. Aww. It's okay. Yeah. It's okay if you want to go with Misery. You can go to the fault with Misery. Uh, uh, okay. Okay. Well, uh, I guess the only thing I can compare is taste. <laughs> well, the one thing I know <laughs> between these, um, these two movies is that one has Christopher Walken in it. Which instantly makes anything awesome. He even made Kangaroo <laughs> Jack awesome for a while. And uh, as for Misery, I actually know a bit about Kathy Bates is anything but an awarding performance in this movie as the creepy and happy fan, also psychotic, the psycho, psycho hose beast man. But, uh, again, I have not seen Dead Zone, so I don't know how I'm going to do this. Just, like I said, if you want to go just say Misery, that's fine. And then, then the other two can decide over <laughs> the movies. Misery. Okay. Misery by default. Okay. The opponent with a no-show. <laughs> going over to Andy. Well, that is a tough one. Um, you know, as a... As a writer, I'm sort of drawn to misery automatically because it's about a writer, of course, mm-hmm. being terrorized by a crazy fan. Um, but I honestly, I think I'm going to have to go with Dead Zone, not just because of Christopher Walken, which right. is always a good good decision, but uh, I thought it was very interesting. Uh, you know, I kind of had the paranormal-ish powers aspect into it and then went on to spawn that TV show with uh, Anthony Michael Hall in it. Uh, taking over the lead. And I enjoyed that show as well, so I, I think I'm going to go with The Dead Zone. Alright, Sam, you're the tiebreaker. Uh, it's um, kind of an unfair advantage, because you got a supernatural uh, sort of uh, 
film with the dead zone and you have like a down to earth concept with misery. Right. But, um, you know, I've only seen like a couple of clips of dead zone and I do get the general uh, gist of it. I do find it an interesting film uh, nonetheless, but I think as far as psychological terror in a way that actually makes it a little stronger, I think misery sort of trumps it because it, like I said, it's a down to earth film it has superb acting between James Caan and uh, Kathy Bates. And it's just the aspect of this one person who is your obsessive fan, who can be gentle, nice, sort of like the woman next door, to like this insane psychopath that could just stab you in the throat just instantly if you just make one minor fuck up on your end. So I think my vote goes to Misery on this point. Okay, Misery goes to the semifinals. All right, here we go. Next round <clears throat> is our number six. Michael s- Bay get a fan like that. That's all I'm saying. Have Michael Bay have a fan like that. Transformers 6 is not supposed to be like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, instead of a sledgehammer, it'd just be like a giant Optimus Prime uh, f- figure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have our number. Uh, uh, you, you know what? You know what would be perfect for that kind of role? Who? Shia LaBeouf. <laughs> <laughs> Just do it. Just um. do it. <laughs> Funny. Uh, oh, my God. That'd, that'd be a perfect parody. I mean, shit. That would be. So, All right. <clears throat> so, what's um, the next subject? The next round is our number six seed versus our number three seed is Stand By Me versus The Shining. That's a tough one. Andy, we'll start off with you this time. All right. Uh, Well, I full disclosure, have not seen Stand By Me. It's one of those few films that I've heard a lot about, and just for whatever reason, I've never gotten around to actually watching. Um, But I know it's classic and iconic in its own right. Uh, However, I have seen The Shining a number of times, and that is a wonderful horror film from Stanley Kubrick and uh, I think a exemplary example of doing a kind of ghost type horror film um, and so I give it to The Shining great performances, directing, acting, everything Alright, Sam? This one is a very tough call for me because I've seen both films The Shining I saw at a very very young age because it was like one of the earliest horror films I've seen as a child next to like The Blob, King Kong, and Jaws and uh, what else and uh, Stand By Me I saw a few times between my childhood and high school and you know they're much like you know uh, The Dead Zone and uh, Misery they're both polar opposites of what the kind of yep. films they are because you have uh, had psychological horror than a down-to-earth uh, drama that, uh, you know, Stamp Me has this nice, you know, calm tone to it of, like, this adventure-esque type of storyline that seems to work well with what uh, Stephen King would work with in uh, writing between the, uh, the childhood characters, all, you know, just this uh, tale of, um, you know, it's just a very interesting story to work with. And with um, uh, The Shining, it's um, even though it wasn't a film that he was particularly fond of, especially the original, uh, you know, I find it to be like a unique, f- phenomenal horror film to watch. So I, you know, it's really, I'm really a split end on this one because they're both good on their own right. So, I mean, I'm, okay. <laughs> But, you know, if I really had to choose one over the other, I would probably say Shining. All right, that automatically goes to the next round. Cody, what would you have chosen if it was the chance? Well, uh, like Sam said, they're both very good movies, somewhat polar opposite with their strange images. The Shining has a guy in a dog suit blowing a man, and the other has a... <laughs> yeah. And in yes. fact, you have everyone throwing up in a pie contest. Uh, yeah, with uh, with uh, what's his name? Uh, he was also in uh, Salute Your Shorts as well. He was uh, called Lardass in the film. It was uh, Donkey Lips. What's his character's name in Salute Your Shorts? But I would have to go with The Shining. Okay. I, 
better mm. movie. All right. So we got the top two tier rounds here. Uh, this is going to be an interesting round because uh, I don't know if you guys have seen one of these films, but here we go. Uh, the number seven seed versus the number two seed is uh, Dolores Claiborne versus the Sean Shank Redemption. This is going to be an interesting round. Uh, Sam, why don't you start with this one? Well, I honestly have never heard of or have seen uh, Dolores Claiborne, so that uh, kind of nicks it for me. But I have seen Shawshank Redemption. In fact, I think almost everyone has seen it because it's been on uh, television, on movie channels. I think AMC particularly mm -hmm. on re on a repetition once in a while, and uh, I have seen the film entirely. And I have to admit that it's a very well made uh, film, and it's a complete and you know uh, much like most of Stephen King's other works, it's one of those few films that's not entirely based on horror, or mm -hmm. you know, childhood or anything like that. It's right. all about a very basic storyline about this person who was wronged and is sent to this corrupt prison and uh, you know it really just plays off from there and there's it's certainly a unique experience to watch because there's so many great actors so many good uh, such a good story to go within the characters and everything uh, you know you got you got morgan freeman of course you have oh mm -hmm. god his name escapes me at the moment tim robbins Tim Robbins, yes, thank you. I, I know it was, it was like Tim, so I'm like, I just couldn't remember it. And you got uh, William Sadler and, and Clancy Brown. That's, yeah. uh, that's a good uh, touch there. And, you know, there's just so many interesting moments that go on within the scenes, and it really gets you on your, your toes once in a while. So it, it, hel it holds a bit of tension almost as much as it would in a Stephen King horror film, in a way. Okay. Okay. Uh... Cody? Well, again, I'm one of the many people that have seen uh, Dolores, so... So, and it's probably unanimous with being Sean Shank, I bet, right? Uh, yeah. uh, Andy, have you seen Dolores? I have not. Uh, I've wow. heard of it, but I have not I've... seen it. It's, it's one of those Stephen King movies that very few have seen, but... Uh, with that, uh, Shawshank automatically gets the default vote for that. <laughs> we'll have to take a look into that sometime to see yeah. what it's about, because I've never heard of that before at, at all, honestly. Uh, hold on, let me... Uh, uh, give me a second. Have, have, you, have any of you seen Gerald's Game yet on Netflix? I have not, but I heard it was very good. I mean, I watched just... it today, actually, in preparation, oh. getting myself in the spirit of Stephen King. Oh. I watched it today. Uh, apparently, while I was looking into that, they do make a reference to Dolores Claiborne. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. So, I mean, they make a reference to, like, Cujo, and they make references to a couple oh. others. <laughs> cool. But they, uh, they, there's some reference in there to Dolores Claiborne. Let me give you a second. Oh, that's not much of a surprise, so. Yeah. All right. Give me let's, a second um... here. Uh, da -da -dum. For those who don't know, let's see. Uh, I don't want that. I want the film. Can I get the film, please? Oh, it also serves Kathy Bates. Yes. Yeah. Uh, okay. So Kathy it's Bates and Jennifer Jason Lee. Uh, yes, you're right. The plot focuses on a strained relationship between a mother and her daughter, largely told through flashbacks after her daughter arrives to her remote hometown on a main island where her mother has been accused of murdering the elderly woman whom she cared for. So if those people are interested in watching that movie, it's... Go check it out. Um, all right. Our number eight seed versus our number one seed. It's The Green Mile versus Carrie. Oh, boy. <laughs> and uh, Cody, start us off once again. Uh, well, well, let's see. Well, first of all, these are not ones down to earth or ones supernatural. These are both somewhat supernatural films. Just... One's a bit more extreme than the other. Ah. Uh, uh, Carrie is probably one of the great Stephen King movies that everyone should have seen. Well, at least the original Brian De Palma film. Anyway. Yes, this is the one I'm referring to. The original Brian yeah. De Palma film, yeah, not the so remake. There's no confusion. There's, yeah, 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 so there's, there's no confusion. There's two remakes out nowadays. There's the one in like the early 2000s starring, um, oh God. She was the she starred in the movie called May and a couple of other obscure horror films. 
And there, of course, there was the recent one with um, oh, uh, Chloe Grace Moore. Yes. Morris. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. And yes. uh, Julianne Moore as the mother. Yes. Yeah. 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 So we are referring to the original Carrie in this case. This is why it's yes. number it's one. Basic. Yes. And that this is why it's number one, because it's the highest rated Stephen King movie. So that is the reason why. <laughs> so. plus, plus, Ryan De Palma is a phenomenal director. Oh, yes. He's done a lot of films, even mm. great films after that, especially Scarface, which was oddly a remake. Yeah. Um, so who's going to uh, start this off? Cody. I, I thought I already did. Did you oh, sig? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of got to sig away a little bit. Sorry. So. Uh-huh. Sorry. <laughs> but anyway, uh, Carrie is actually a pretty good psychological, somewhat supernatural movie about a girl, basically. <laughs> about a girl basically going through puberty, if you look at it. <laughs> yeah, when you really think about it, it's like that. Yeah. yeah. She's sort of like a different version of Jean Grey. Let's be real. Mm. Ah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I guess. One way to think about it. And, uh, while the Green Mile is not as extreme, but more of a, uh, how do I put it, a bit of a softer tone. It does have some extreme moments during the movie, there's no doubt about that. An electric chair, just to name one of them. Mm. But, but if I had to choose, uh, I, even though I do enjoy the shit out of Carrie, I would have to go with the Green Mile. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, Andy. Uh, you know, both are fantastic films. You know, Carrie was, uh, I believe, the first Stephen King adaptation ever, and deserves some credit for that, especially. Uh, and it's, I mean, it's such a classic. And you know, not to take anything away from Green Mile, which was a fantastic, also you know, kind of sad depressing emotional movie and very well acted uh you know michael clark duncan and tom hanks and all that um but i would still i would have to give it to carrie that one is like the epitome of the stephen king adaptation in my opinion all right sam you're the tiebreaker well this is certainly apples and oranges here um then again most of these choices have been for the most part Uh but um Green Mile, in a way, seemed to me like if Shawshank went with a supernatural route. Not to say it's bad, but it certainly has an interesting aspect between the characters and the storyline, especially the characters. Uh, you have like this kind-hearted character like Michael Clark Duncan, rest his soul. And you have all these guards, one of them played by Tom Hanks, who basically are, you know, interested in what kind of uh, per, you know what kind of person he is and what he's capable of so but I think with Carrie you know there is something stronger there because this is someone who is being abused at home at school and very few people understand her problems and in a way it is sort of like a, like Co- Cody said is like a metaphorical stance on uh, you know puberty but not just that but also about being a teenager just feeling like an outcast no matter what you're doing and um, and you know I have to admit I really like that aspect the the climax of the film where everything where shit hits the fan at the prom and you know it's, it's just a phenomenal sequence that um, that you can't really you can't really try and emulate as much in any other film, especially with the remakes. I mean, I actually saw the clips that they, you know, I saw clips from the remakes and how they attempted the prom slaughter sequence, and it was just, just kind of tacky. I mean, especially the first remake. So I have to give points to the original. To All Gary. right, we got the semifinals now. <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> All right. Wow, throats are really there. All right, first up, first up in the semifinals, we've got Shawshank Redemption versus The Shining. Oh. Andy, you're up. Oh man, <laughs> oh. <laughs> that's a tough choice, huh? That yeah. is really hard. Yeah. It is. 
a very sort of typical Stephen King movie made incredibly well, and you have the atypical Stephen King movie, like the one and only. It's like such an atypical, would never expect it to be Stephen King. Uh, God, The Shining or Shawshank? You know, as a horror film, I would have to give it to The Shining, but as just a film in general, I, I give it to Shawshank. Ooh. I think that's a fantastic movie in almost every aspect. You know, my wife and I still watch it every so often. It's one of those movies where we have the DVD or maybe Blu-ray now, and we just pop it in just to watch it because it's, it's just that good. All right, Sam? Well, this is a really tough choice because on one, I mean, they're both films that are overplayed in their own genre because you got Shining that could be played over and over again, especially around the Halloween season. But with Shawshank, you see it every day. I say more so than like a Christmas story during the Christmas season. So, but you know, if you really, you know, in my personal opinion, for what I really think is the best, Shawshank is pretty close, but I would rank uh, The Shining a little closer because there's certainly that the factor that gets you that une- that sort of unease tension that you you really don't want to look at, but you just can't help but see what's going on next. So I have to give the props to that film more. All right, Cody, you're the tiebreaker. All right. Well, oh, uh, well. The Shining, on the one hand, is a great, scary, suspenseful film. I enjoy it always around the year during Halloween or whenever I just want to see someone get really fucked up. (laughs) But kind of from the get-go of The Shining, you've got to kind of see what these characters are going to kind of go through. It's like, it's Jack Nicholson. Yeah, he's he's going to try and kill these two. Not even before they even get to those, like, he's going to kill them. He's going to try to in some way. But with the Shawshank, you're actually watching all these characters, especially Andy Frank, and you're just wondering, what's going to happen to these people? Or what's going to happen to Andy, because the story's not being told through him, it's being told through his best friend, Ray. So we don't exactly know what's going to happen to some of these characters down the line. So my point goes to Shawshank. All right, first one in the finals. Okay, next up in the semifinals, we've got Carrie versus... Misery. And <laughs> Sam, you're up to bat. Well, we've certainly gone from apples to oranges to just straightforward apples now. <laughs> but in this case, it's like uh, Red Delicious versus uh, Granny Smith here. I mean, you've got the one of the earliest Stephen King adaptations, and then you've got the Stephen King adaptation, like one of the very few that people will say, this is one of the best Stephen King films you will ever see. So it's really a tough choice because you've got two great female leads, Sissy Spacek and uh, Kathy Bates. And, you know, you've got them into two uh, completely different roles between Spacek, who is this tormented soul slash um, underdog type of figure, so to speak. And then you've got the mentally unstable that shit insane Kathy Bates. So you really have a tough choice to work with between the hero and the villain. So I think as far as, you know, between the characters and, the, you know, the film entirely, I think Carrie goes a little more than the misery because you kind of want to see that character sort of, you know, in perspective, you want to see that character grow. You want to see that character really thrive. And even after everything that's going on with her, even when she's killing everyone, you just say, you know what? She, I think she she has every right to be that fucking pissed. So, you know what? I think Carrie deserves a spot. All right. Cody? Oh. Again, I have to agree with Sam with the two female leads. You know, they do both give good, quick performances, and you don't know what the hell is going to happen to them come near the end. But while uh, Carrie is a good, is a good movie about 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 again about Carrie, it's a good, good movie about a woman, you know, being tormented, you know, both in every aspect of her life. But 
I have to recommend, uh, I have to uh, disagree because Misery, Kathy Bates, yes, she does steal the show, but the main character we're rooting for to see get through this is James Cannon character Paul Sheldon, and we never know what's going to happen to him given what she does to him, so I'm going to have to give my points to Misery. And you get the tiebreaker. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, she's not to start it off. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, hmm. That is a tough decision. They're both, I mean, at this point, they're both classics in their own right. I mean, it's very hard to say one is empirically better than the other. Um, right. But if I had to pick just one of them, God, I think, I think I'd have to go with Carrie, honestly. Um, they're both, I mean, I think they're both phenomenal, you know, as already stated, both actresses do, did a fantastic job. Um, and I mean, that misery made me afraid of Kathy Bates. Um, <laughs> oh, I think there's another film that would make you more afraid of Kathy Bates. I won't say what, but. Oh God, no. Oh God, no. <laughs> <laughs> he knows what I'm talking about. Close your eyes. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. But anyway, about. sorry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I'd have to go with Carrie. That still is just a classic film. The first one to be adapted, and uh, it's hard to beat. But of course, now I know this means it's going to be Shawshank and Carrie, isn't it? Yeah, that's the finals here. We are, at, we, we are in the finals now, people. This is the top two. This is the, this is the title match here. We are in the title match right now. We got Carrie versus Shawshank now. Buttonheads. And you know what? Cody, you can start this one off. <laughs> I know he looks happy. <laughs> oh boy. Uh. Oh, this is. Uh. You know what? You know what? We've analyzed these movies, I think, enough. I'm just gonna let. I'm just gonna flip a fucking coin. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Oh my god! I can't believe he's actually doing that. Yes. Heads is Shawshank, tails is Carrie. Let it okay. hit the table. Tails, Carrie. <laughs> Carrie wins. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Simple enough, uh, Andy. Well, I'm not going to flip a coin, though it is an impossible decision. Um, yeah. I, if I were given the option right now to watch one of those two movies, I would watch Shawshank. So I'm going to go with Shawshank. All right, Sam, you got the tiebreaker. Well. We certainly, again, this is another apples orange uh, test here. But you know what? Uh, like he said, if I had to choose one over the other, if I really wanted to watch one of them, I would have to choose Carrie. Ooh. Carrie, I think, would be, uh, you know, it's a good option, especially since we're close to the Halloween season. Halloween's coming up. You know, it's a perfect movie to watch for this season. I mean, especially some of these other choices we've had. I mean, we had Shining yeah. and uh, Misery and everything. I mean, yeah. And there we have it, folks. We have our winner. The best Stephen King movie of all time is Carrie. Still number one. Good choice. Good choice. God. I don't think you could have had a wrong choice at the end of that. No. No, no, no. no not, not with these choices, anyway. I mean, I, not just these choices, either. I mean, there are still oh, yeah. dozens of other Stephen King films, right. especially the recent uh, it movie right and no spoilers about that please because i have not seen that yep. yet yeah i have great anticipation on seeing yep. that especially since i grew up uh you know having childhood trauma over the original miniseries with tim curry as pennywise and all so <laughs> i'm sorry it still surprised me to this day i saw this miniseries also as a young kid tim curry made me laugh my ass off <laughs> well <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, it's you know, it's kind of like looking back. It's a childhood thing. Like, you look back on some of the stuff you used to watch between the good cartoon shows to what you consider to be the scariest shit you've ever seen. It's like, oh, that's just fucking hokey now. Yeah, the scariest shit for me as a kid was Watership Down. That was... <laughs> well, I, I can agree with you on that, especially the the film that would they would that the guys between the author and the original director of that film would work on afterwards, Plague Dog. I mean, Jesus Christ. Yeah. But um, as far as Stephen King films go, I mean, there's still plenty of other good there, films. There is. I mean, you've, got, you've got The Mist. That's a holy shit film right there. Mm -hmm. You've got... This one's like my 
this is like a big cult classic that I think deserves a lot more attention. Creep Show. Oh yeah. yeah. Actually, oh, I should yeah. rephrase that. I think it deserves a proper Blu-ray release. Hmm. We've got like a half-ass Blu-ray. Yes, either go watch and, you know, or pick up the comic book on Amazon. Yeah, nice. And you know, you know, it's also you know best to mention that film because you know the late great George Romero in that film. God rest his soul. Oh. And, uh, you know, there's also another horror collaboration between Stephen King and John Carpenter with Christine. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. So, Can't go wrong with that. Uh, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you have have it, have it, have it here. We have Carrie as the best Stephen King film of all time, according to us. Please leave a comment below of what you think the best Stephen King movie is, in your opinion. Uh, so... Thank you for listening and watching this. If you want more movie brackets, please give us a like down below. More likes will give us a chance to do movie brackets more often on the podcast. Next time, next time for Cody and Sam, uh, we have Tobe, Toby Hooper as the topic. And you know, uh, I, I'll bring this up right now for next time. Uh, a couple months ago on my birthday, I got a Blu-ray of a Toby Hooper film called Life Force. So when we do that uh, topic, I could probably discuss that and give my personal thoughts on it. So that's uh, something to at least look forward to. And I yeah. also have, you know, thoughts on other Toby Hooper films, including the two Texas Chancellor Massacre films. Yes, yes. And I will announce this right now. We'll have a guest on as well. We'll have Andy's personal good friend, David Rose, on. <laughs> DVD show. It would be nice. It would be nice. So, uh, yes, thank you for listening and watching. Subscribe for more podcasts, and I'll see you guys on the other side. Peace out. Hit like and subscribe, or we will perform voodoo rites on your eternal organs. And it'll be very painful. <laughs> do it now, do it now, do it now. You do it, do it now. Ah. You do the chopper. You do the chopper. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.